Hello, well, Tommy. Hey, Nico. It is an honor and a pleasure to be chatting with you. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing very well, man. Now, before we get into the new album, I know Bruce recently had a bout with COVID-19. How's Bruce doing? He is fine. He, um, I spoke to him, oh, must be a couple of weekends back when he when he, he first, uh, you know, he, he had it. Uh, by a few days, maybe four or five days, and I called him up and I said, how are you feeling? He said, you know what, Nick? He said, I felt like I'm really, really fatigued. <clears throat> now, as you can understand, Bruce is super fit. So for him to be fatigued is, you know, you know that's uh, pretty bad. Uh, he said, I just felt like I had the flu, a, a, a heavy bout flu. But he's been vaccinated. So, um, you know, he, in his own words, he said, I, 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 I'm, I'm so glad that I did because I think it would have been a lot worse had I not been vaccinated. But he was he's fine. He's up and running. I think he's uh, got a clean bill of health as of Monday last week. And um, he's off to Denmark to do some press. So he, he must be in fine form now. Well, Nico, you had some time off during the pandemic. What were some of the things you got to do that normally you don't get to because you're busy with Iron Maiden? Um, watching lots of Netflix and Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, and my wife has this... Uh, this app on her phone, which is called the Magic Portal. And uh, it is uh, all of the different food carriers, you know, like uh, DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to I got to learn the insies and outsies of the fine, uh, fine delicacies and cuisines that are available, primarily my restaurant. So we, we were very fortunate to, st you know, get open last year when uh, the state opened up in, in June. So uh, we've been doing okay there. But yeah, you know, uh, the only other thing <clears throat> really is uh, I've got time to practice my snooker. For you boys and girls that don't know what snooker is, it's like uh, pool, but on a massive big table. And uh, I still can't play very well. So, <laughs> I, you know, little things like that, you know, did, doing chores at the house, um, you know, uh, playing a couple of three days a week, I go in a drum room, do 45 minutes, half an hour, whatever. You know, there's only so much playing you can do on your own as a drummer. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't get in, I can't get into playing with tracks that don't have drums on because, you know, my, my drum set's rather loud in my room and putting the headphones <laughs> on, you know, it just, it, 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 it doesn't like it. So that's it really. Now I know Adrian Smith, he's an avid fisherman. Uh, you ever go fishing with him? No, mate, I can't stand it. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Real, real, I'll make a long story even longer. When okay. I was a, when I was a lad, my my um my uncle Dave was married to my mum's sister. And my uncle Dave and his family come from Great Yarmouth and they're fishermen people. They they own fish shops. Mm -hmm. And my my family, my mum's side of the family, owned a fish shop in uh, North London. And my dad and my uncle Dave, every weekend they'd go fishing at four or five in the morning. Uh, well, because, you know, I was a young boy and I'd want to hang out with my dad and my uncle. I'd go with them. And oh, I God. used to get up at four o'clock in the morning in the middle of the winter going fishing, all done up with all the boots on, with the fur in it and all that's malarkey. And of course, there's my uncle and my dad cashing all kinds of fish out the, out the, out the river and what. And who, 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 who was it who didn't catch anything except for a cold? <laughs> that was me, see? Anyway, so that kind of pushed me off of going fishing. Um, I like to stay dry and stay on land, mate. You know, as a kid, I had a huge poster of the Number of the Beast album cover on my wall. Then the next album, Clive Burr, is out. Nico McBrain is in. I was yeah. talking to a buddy of mine, Tim, and we both wondered, how did you wind up becoming the drummer for Iron Maiden? Well, uh, it was sort of like who you knew. Uh, I did a tour with Maiden on uh, the Killers album. When the Killers album came out, Adrian had just joined the band and Paul Deanne, I was still singing. And mm -hmm. uh, we, I had a band called, I was playing with called Trust back in like 79, 80. And uh, we ended up doing a tour with Maiden. Uh, that was the, 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 the most amount of time I'd spent with them. But I met Iron Maiden in 1979 on their very first European gig. I was playing in a different band called McKitty. Okay. This was before Trust. Um, we toured on the same bill. We had to say it was one gig. And that's when I first met Steve Harris and the gang. Uh, mm -hmm. So guitar player, it was a trio. The guitar player's guitar amp blew up. So mm -hmm. the, Charlie Tumahai, who was the bass player, and I did an impromptu solo. And Steve was standing on the side of the stage. And he said he'd never seen anything like it in his life. So he remembered that. And so when things went wrong with Clive and the fact that I had toured with them and made friends with them in with the Trust tour, uh, I was the first drummer that, that uh, sprang to mind. 
Now, here's a weird thing. I took over the store from Clive, and later that year, uh, I, I think in 83 or 84, Clive ended up doing an album with Trust. Wow. So not a lot of people know that. No, that's a, I never knew it myself. Mm. I have a feeling that Iron Maiden didn't record the new album, Senjutsu, during the pandemic. So what's the backstory of making this new album? Okay, so we, uh, we had planned during the Book of Souls tour that we were going to do another record. So the studio got penciled in for some time in 2019. I think we block booked the first five, six months of uh, penciled in, you know, the first five or six months of 2019. The idea then being that we would do the album in between the little sabbatical we had between Legacy Part 1 and Legacy Part 2. That's Legacy mm -hmm. of the Beast Tour 1 and 2. So we had enough time to, uh, to, to, to pop in, you know, go and do the album. We went and did the album in 2019. We started around the end of February. Uh, went in the studio. Five months later, we'd had the, the album. Then we're off touring. Uh, so then after that tour finished, the idea was to obviously release the album sometime later in either 2020. You know, there, there was a sketch, but it hadn't been decided. Mm -hmm. And of course, pandemic hit. So that put everything on hold. But the good thing out of that pandemic was we were able to really work on putting the writing of the wall, writing on the wall piece of film together. And Bruce and the gang did such a great job on that. So that's how that happened. In the world of smartphones and social media and everybody trying to break the story, how did you keep it a secret? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> now that's that was that was a coup, coup de gras or whatever they call it. <laughs> so we basically what happened. Steve has had the only copy that he took on his computer of the album, the mix, the mix finished, finished product, right? That was it. There were no copies sent to anyone. There was no advanced media. Uh, there was no, well, of course, there was no advanced uh, listenings for any of the radio record companies around the world. So it was all kept under wraps. I got my uh, digital download of it um, from Steve three and a half months ago. Uh, wow. So, you know, we oh, only the band... Each of the members of the band had a copy of it. Bruce had a copy earlier in the year, obviously, um, when Steve went over to England prior to the COVID really hitting bad. Bruce did have a copy of it on his, his computer, but he, we, we were all sworn to absolute secrecy with it. We couldn't even tell our friends about it, you know, like, oh, we've got a new album, it's done, la da and this is the title of it and whatnot. So we had to keep, keep it a secret, and I think we did a pretty damn good job of that. You sure did, because all of a sudden you guys just started, you know, leaving some hints out. Boom, here's the writing on the wall. It was just yeah. nowhere. So it was a really good kept secret. I first heard the writing on the wall. Um, it was the most different sounding track compared to your previous works that I ever heard from Iron Maiden. Uh, was it an experimental track or just how this particular song came out? And no, it was just it was just a song that was written. You know, we we don't have these uh, resting on our laurels of having to make songs that sound like the last album and the one before that and the one before that and whatever. You know, we go in, the guys write a song. Bruce and H wrote that. It was uh, just the way it came about. Uh, you know, once you put the basic back track down, you know, all the guitars and drums, and then you layer solos on it. Bruce will do his vocals. Uh, then you think about an introduction. Adrian came up with the acoustic intro which i think is phenomenal and that's a departure for us and you know people go oh that's different and you go yeah see that's what we're like we we like to mix things up we don't like to just stay bang on you know you've got stratego you look at stratego the next single comes out mm -hmm. we haven't got a video for it but um you know it's that's more your classic maiden that's your gallop that's your that's yep, your structure yep. you know that you know instead of going into a second chorus it goes into a solo which is a slightly different format to the normal if you like um uh, me, you know, uh, menu of writing, you know, right. you know, intro, verse, chorus, bridge, or mm -hmm. sorry, intro, verse, bridge, chorus, solo, out, whatever, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it just, it's just the way it happened. And uh, we're extremely excited about the new album. And and you think there is a slight, you know, the, well, you know there's a slight difference in what Maiden sound like in that track and how mm -hmm. it was put together. You wait till you hear the album. There's going to be some minds blown, believe me. Well, so far, the writing on the wall is doing great for us here. And it does sound amazing. It still has that Iron Maiden sound. It was just when I heard it, I goes, I've never heard you do anything like this. And it was just yes. a, 
but a good surprise. It's nice. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it was a crack. I remember, uh, you know, um, we, we did that song. Uh, we did it in sections. It, they, some of the songs were compiled. It, you know, we, we'd learn a piece of the, especially on the long epics, you know, we'd learn a piece, we called it, then we'd learn the next section and then they would compile it. Uh, so a lot of the songs, the longer stuff was done like that. But writing on the wall, if I'm not mistaken, we did that in, in, in two sections. And, uh, you know, when you hear it back, I was like, oh yeah, now I remember, you know. So um, it was, it was cool. It's just a, you know, it, we, we, I, I like to think we're a progressive band. We always have been, and uh, you know, we don't, we, we, we do experiment with stuff still along the line. You know, we don't just try and stick to the same old formula, which is good. Well, the new album from Iron Maiden, Senjutsu, it hits stores and download locations September third. Are you? Is already in the planning uh, for a possible tour. Or are you going to wait for more of this COVID stuff to calm down? No, we haven't. Uh, we haven't discussed um, going out for an album tour. We've we've still got um, the last uh, Legacy of the Beast tour that was scheduled for you know 2020. We had a four month tour planned around that. So this is now going to happen as a two and a half month tour uh, next year. So once we've uh, once we know where we're at, hopefully we'll be able to get out finish that part of the tour off um you never know what surprises you may or may not get on the next legacy tour but um you know we haven't actually made plans as you know because of the way the world is at the moment and uh i'm so sad about that but at the end of the day you know it is what it is but let's see what happens next year mate no so to answer your question rather shortly no plans <laughs> okay okay well Nico, it has been an honor and a pleasure to speak with you um i wish you and the guys all the the best and i can't wait to see you guys come around your next tour uh, and you too my friend i just want to say to you you and the guys there thanks wgrd for this time with you tommy and uh you know all your listening fans out there in that lovely big listening world i wish you all the best and health and happiness keep washing those hands and don't stand cl- too close to someone you don't know thank you so much nico you be well you too tommy thanks so very much mate